We have a question here from a uh, YouTuber, Sean Bumstead, one, two, five, zero. Sean asks, let's assume Trump is convicted and goes to prison or somehow avoids it with a plea deal. And in either case, wins the presidency. Will world leaders have nothing to do with an indicted criminal as president? I think indictments are not. If Donald Trump gets back into that white house, you're going to have a hell of a lot of world leaders across the globe going, Oh my God, this guy again, there's no way I'm going to sit down at a table and talk to him. I mean, we saw, and, and there's you know, plenty of photographs, you know, the one where <laughs> Merkel is over the table at Donald Trump and he's just sitting there. Mm. Um, world leaders despised Donald Trump. The, the world leaders that we need as our friends despise Donald Trump. Kim Jong-un loved him. Vladimir Putin loved him. Saudi Arabia, that Royal family loved him, but the people that we actually depend upon, you know, trade partners, things like that, they hated him and they hated him before the criminal indictments. So you could only imagine how bad his reception across the globe would be now. So I do think that is a really great point to bring up. And honestly, I think it's something that president Biden and the Democrats should be running on. I got to tell you, listen, the Democrats right now uh, led by Biden, they want to stay out of the whole indictment thing, right? They don't want to make a big deal of it. They don't want to talk about it because they don't want to make it seem like it is some kind of partisan, you know, uh, hit job. So they're doing a good job with that. But at some point they're going to have to speak up about it. And honest to God, like Sean Bumstead, 1250 brilliant friggin' question, because that is exactly how the Democrats should frame this. Not just about how bad it is for the United States that we have a president who's under criminal indictment or could have a president who's criminally convicted. They need to talk about what it does to global standing. Okay. Believe it or not. You know, some of you may remember, some of you may not. That was actually a big part of the 2008 presidential election. You know, John McCain versus Barack Obama. Obama came in talking about our global allies, how they'd lost faith in the United States under George W. Bush's leadership, the lies that led us into Iraq, the horrible things America was doing. And Obama was the one who was going to come in. He's going to fix us. He's going to fix us at home. He's going to fix us on the global stage. And the global image of the United States did recover went back down under Trump, went back up under Biden. And I got to tell you, we probably wouldn't be able to get the kind of support we've gotten globally for Ukraine. If that image of the United States had not rebounded, Russia would have come in. They would have annexed the whole country and it had been over. Trump would have let it happen. He probably would have sent troops to fight for Russia, but the Democrats can use this to their advantage. If they're smart about it, if they frame it correctly, because I know a lot of Republicans out there think, oh, America, no, we don't need no allies. We can't be this globalist country. And it's not about globalism. It's about understanding that we are not some island cut off from the rest of civilization. We have people coming into and leaving this country, going to other countries every single day. It is a global society. You don't have to be a globalist to understand why it's important that we have strong allies across the globe. We need them, not just for military issues. We need them for trade. We need them for travel. We need them for tourism. They come over here and they spend their dollars. They're less likely to do that. If they think this country is being run by a guy that should be sitting in a prison cell. So that is a good sell for the Democrats. If they want to start using that again, maybe I'd wait a little bit. Like let's let the indictments kind of simmer for a bit before we get into it, but they should. And again, absolutely brilliant question. Sean Bumstead, 1250. Awesome question. Thank you for asking it. Hey everyone, this is Aspen. And did you know that for the low, low cost of $0 per day, you can subscribe to the fair and balanced YouTube channel. We also encourage you to like comment and share, but again, click that subscribe button and help Aspen. Oh, not be so grumpy.